Welcome back to another episode of Leaders Recon. I'm your host, Jeremiah Miller, and today we have with us Sergeant Bryce. Sergeant Bryce, welcome to the program. Thank you for coming in today. Uh, thank you for having me. So, uh, obviously, I'm sitting across from you, and the first thing I notice is you're a little bit imposing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm sure this is how it just goes in the military, but they're like, that guy right there, he's intimidating. We'll make him a school instructor. Is that kind of how it went down? Uh, for me, I don't believe... Actually, t so 10 years ago, I was doing training at my local unit. We're doing prepping for a mobilization. Mm -hmm. And train, the idea of being an instructor was not something I personally thought about. I was sure. really skinny kid. I was a brand <laughs> new E5. I did not look anything like I do today. Mm -hmm. um, fresh, young E5. So the training program that was initiated during that time, um, it just made sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was active duty for three years mm -hmm. before I joined the guard for the second time in 07. And training was just, it just came naturally. Uh, the mentoring that goes along with training a person, mm -hmm. it's not just here are the facts of this task you have to complete. Sure. There's a lot of my personal experience with completing this task Mm -hmm. is wrapped into being an instructor along with, hey, here are some things to think about or real, ro real world view of the task that you're being asked to do. Sure. That goes along with being part of an instruction or a block of instruction. Right, the practical, like the, the, the classroom and then the practical application. Absolutely. It's easy to read a book mm -hmm. and think you have a, a, a standard understanding of what something can look like on paper than uh, actually doing it you start to run into real world problems because <laughs> not everybody is going to see or understand what it is you're trying to do <clears throat> if you're not on the same page and that, that drives complications. Um, so seeing a task from multiple sides, mm -hmm. uh, other people's past experiences, uh, book, textbook knowledge, mm -hmm. and then real world application that really sure. all ties into how to complete a task or truly understand a task. And as an instructor, these are things you have to understand and think about yourself when preparing to teach any block of instruction. Mm -hmm. How am I going to be able to relate this information to these individuals um, so that they will be able to relate it to something they, they already know? Right. So it just kind of sinks in a little more. So the more I give of myself mm -hmm. and my personal experiences, I think it translates a lot better than just a dry PowerPoint or even a dry textbook explanation of, of any given task. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's kind of interesting that you say that because, um, so I'm a new father, <laughs> and of course, you know, you're going into it first child and you're, you're reading everything you can get your hands on. And one of the books I was reading talked about um, education and the Europeans have this really interesting version of education where, where they break knowledge into two parts. There's, and I'm gonna butcher these words, I think they're German words, there's Kentness and Weisschaufen, and Kentness is is like kinetic or experiential learning, mm -hmm. and Weishaufen is is like your your book learning. So it, it's really interesting to see that the army's kind of taken this um, new age, not not common within the United States, but this 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 new sort of approach to learning because it is kind of cutting edge in that in that respect. Um, so you were a BLC instructor. Back in my day, it was a uh, WLC. I'm dating myself a little bit, which is, you know, when you think about it, like it wasn't that long ago. So you, it changes a lot in the military, but more or less, I think the course is the same. But what is BLC? So BLC, basic leader course, mm -hmm. um, formerly WOC warrior leader course. And I said I went through warrior leader course myself in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, primary, I was a PLDC, is a primary leader development course. Hmm. So all of these okay. kind of have a common LC leader course has stayed throughout the years. And um, that really is what it is. It's a leader's course, no matter what, how you slice it or what you put in front of that. A lot of people, when you go beyond BLC, basically your course, you start getting to your MOS specific leader training. Um, mm -hmm. That basic leader course is a foundation that all levels of leadership should always stand upon. Okay. Our basic core principles of leadership. Uh, I do construction on the side, not professionally. I have 
worked for a couple building companies. When I attempt to explain new concepts mm -hmm. to soldiers, whether it just be in a common conversation or actual blocks of instruction, I have a tendency to relate it to construction <laughs> all the time because sure. it's what I know. Right. And hopefully through my correlating to something I know, it'll help help them tie, help it, to their own tie it to something that they know because it's sure. they see i can do it then they can do it right um so everything is a foundation and basically your course being the foundation of nco leadership there's core principles that will always remain and should always remain well to, to to steal your construction analogy blc is the foundation and everything else is just building on top of that Absolutely. Same foundation, yeah. Without without a solid foundation, anybody that has ever done laid pavers in their yard, <laughs> built a deck, um, oh boy, yeah. even built a birdhouse, <laughs> uh, even as simple as something like that, there there has to be a foundation. If you don't have that solid foundation, everything you build on top of it eventually will fall apart. Yep. It's just how the, the physical world works, and it works the same in the mind. Sure. If you don't hold on to those foundation principles, Everything you try to add to it will eventually, they, they won't have anything to stand on and you won't have anything to stand on as a leader mm -hmm. if you start deviating from your foundation or trying right. to change the foundation after the fact becomes extremely difficult, mm -hmm. uh, if that makes any sense. No, absolutely. Um, so just to, to you know uh, recap, I guess. Yeah. So BLC, it's all MOSs. All MOSs can go to any any BLC school. So you could be at the basic leader course and be there with you know military police and infantry and engineers. It's just kind of all mixed. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Um, it was probably around 2003, mm -hmm. um, in early 2000s, the Army put out an initiative to allow soldiers to be promoted to the next rank. Mm -hmm. Uh, without completing the necessary primary military education sure. or PME um, necessary for that next rank. That kind of led to a problem because it lasted about five, 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. of soldiers getting promoted to E5, E6, and E7, and even E8 without the next level education. Right, the prerequisite schools. The prerequisite schools. It was about four years ago the Army reversed that decision and started making it required for an E4 to have basically your course to be E5 mm -hmm. and so forth, advanced leader for E6 and senior leader for E7 and then master leader for E8 and Sergeant Major Academy for Sergeant Major. Right. Um, it kind of created a little backlog, mm -hmm. but it also showed the Army something different as well, which I found interesting. Because after I leaving um, the West Virginia RTI where I was teaching 12 Whiskey 10, I went back to Florida and I was working with these, um, some of these E5s that were um, legacy is the exact term that they've been, been labeled, promoted without being educated. Um, you found a pattern in some of them where you saw missing core principles, not just as leaders, but almost as people as well. Hmm. Uh, lack of accountability uh, in themselves and things that they were telling their soldiers and how they were leading soldiers. There's definitely a pattern from the old way of not completing PME before mm -hmm. getting promoted. It's absolutely necessary. Okay, so USASMA is the ultimate proponent that owns the course material for BLC, basically your course. So it changed. Uh, there was an initiative probably in 2017 where it started in the development and it wasn't until the summer of 2018 that a pilot program for the new BLC was initiated uh, at numerous BLC schoolhouses throughout the Guard and active duty. Um, the hard launch from the best of my memory was January of 2019. Mm -hmm. So I attend, um, during that time, I had already been there 10 months teaching the BLC that we've had, BLC, WLC, and PLDC. The core course of that basic leader course had pretty much been the same for the last 43 years. Wow. Not much had changed. Um, some things here and there, but this was the first real change, like complete overhaul of basically your course in 43 years. 
Mm -hmm. I got to teach it for two, two months, two cycles. But before that, we had the course material in our hands as instructors for about four or five months. And we did a lot of review. We sat down and we did MDMP, military decision-making process with each other about how we wanted to go about learning it for ourselves and how to teach it to one another. And we actually did short little teaching classes uh, for the new course where five months or so leading up to actually initiating the new course for the first set of students. I believe it was in August of 2018 was our first okay. new BLC that we taught. How does the, the change that um, the basic leader course, how does that change um, tackle that, that you know, culture of apathy or the risk of, of developing NCOs that are, that are task oriented rather than um, you know, competent leaders, let's say? Okay. Uh, I think not just in BLC, the Army adopted the resiliency program because mm -hmm. resiliency is the, is the battle against apathy. Um, and not a lot of people understand that a right. building is only as strong as its weakest pole, just like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Mm -hmm. You are only as strong as the weakest part of your brain that mm -hmm. you allow people to see. Yeah, exactly. You, if you allow your weaknesses to control your actions and decisions, if you allow your fear and your weaknesses to control that and shape who you think you are to others, you will never improve, you will never get better, you'll never get stronger. Um, and these are things I try to draw out of students is to understand these new, not so much newer concepts, to so just understand the concept of not being afraid to speak up, to learn new things, go outside your comfort zone, um, mm -hmm. to help others, and in doing so, you learn more by teaching. Right. Um, you, you take on a new task, Okay, I've learned this task. I, I've completed it one time. All right, I'm gonna go back to my unit. And then they just keep it to themselves because they're not sure if they can show it to someone else. Because they did it once and they did it okay. I was like, now, okay, now take this new task you've learned or these new skills you've learned, take them back to the unit, share them with your battle buddies, right. share them with your leaders. So it sounds kind of like this, this new iteration of BLC is really pushing uh, that mentorship aspect and, and you know, uh, leading with compassion or compassionate leadership, um, uh, you know, wa that, that, that watchful kind of leadership where, you know, if, if you observe uh, a soldier who you think may be in crisis, that you actually have the tools in your toolbox that you need to help that soldier and mean meaningfully engage with them to develop a, a positive relationship but also that, that trust that I think needs to exist between uh, leaders and, and, and members of their team. Does that sound about right? Absolutely. Um, uh, as an instructor, I always try to share, and, and all of my time as a squad leader and team leader, um, sharing yourself is really what, what breaks down barriers. Um, Sergeant Major Sampa, the current uh, Sergeant Major of the Army National Guard, I've heard him, him say it several times, and I completely agree. Um, having the tough conversations, the question has been asked to him, how do we have the tough conversations with our soldiers, Sergeant Major, how do we do that? Mm -hmm. um, and he has a very simple answer, and I completely agree. The conversation starts with, uh, how, well, how were you raised? Mm -hmm. How did you grow up? Right. Um, and that is, is something that you won't find in a book. There's no army doctrine that covers um, connecting with soldiers or connecting on a human level um, with people, but that really is where it starts because uh, almost everybody has something from their childhood that is similar to someone else's childhood. Right. And the difference is, and it's easy to say, oh yeah, I grew up playing basketball. Oh, so did you. Okay, cool. We both like basketball. But what were those differences? Mm -hmm. And understanding the differences can help grow strengths. And that's when you learn, okay, you're good at this. I'm not so great at that. You can help bring me up to speed, maybe not to your level. And then same and vice versa. What is it that you don't, you're not good at that I am? And you help each other and you learn that through communicating and learning someone's background. Right. And that's again, another part of mentoring and helping, helping soldiers grow connected and you grow that small, small team mentality the team level, that is where it all begins. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a strong team, you cannot perform any higher than that. 
Right. The company, the platoon will fall apart, squads will fall apart, and so forth, all the way up. Mm -hmm. Strong team, team level, all the way down from that team leader E5 and the three or four soldiers that they manage or mentor, that is the strength of the army. We are only as strong as an army as the, the weakest team that we have. So I know, I know it, to you know, our viewers, it might seem that we went down a little bit of a rabbit hole regarding uh, you know, team level uh, leadership, but I know it ties together. So do you wanna kind of bring that full circle and, and, and tie, that, tie that to the basic leader course? Right, so some of the things we had just finished discussing were mentorship, resiliency mm. and fighting apathy um, all the way back through the histories here and how the stigma of um, counselings are negative, uh, not coming forward when you have problems um, is a negative stigma. Now we're turning all those things, we're trying to change the shape of those in people's minds. Uh, in BLC, the resiliency, um, I believe there is a class now that talks specifically to resiliency. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is definitely a course, uh, one of the lesson plans in there, we do military forms. Um, uh, it's it's army, army writing style is, is what the mm -hmm. course is called. And they've wrapped in a couple of different things um, that we think uh, are important. It all pulls back into explaining things in BLC. There's so many different new lesson plans that we are teaching in BLC now that are mention and show and again personal experience added into these new lesson plans really helps elevate the the new soldiers minds to kind of help change those stigmas and and bring a more positive light to so the it things. really sounds like it starts tuning them to be those those first line leaders that that is a hundred percent the intent of all the new courseware and it's really driven um by the classroom, mm -hmm. not so much by the instructor. The instructor is a facilitator, and that is a definite new term that has come with the new BLC. We used to just be instructors. The new course, which is um, for to be certified as an instructor, focuses a lot more on facilitation, mm -hmm. and facilitating more as here's a topic, we want to discuss it with the classroom, and then just let it fester and try to get the engagement in the room and allow the personal experiences of the classroom to really grow the idea. And myself as a facilitator, I am just help simply help guiding the ship that we're all on. And they're the ones more or less teaching each other with guided checkpoints that have to be met mm -hmm. for it to be considered a successful lesson plan. Well, and that's a much more organic style of learning, I think. I mean, you can have somebody show you something, you can do it yourself under their explicit instruction, or they can give you a, a more broad task and they can just kind of nudge you in the right direction. And as you figure it out, I think it kind of gets imprinted on the mind and it becomes one of those lessons that you actually carry away with you rather than, you know, losing in that, that post-school brain dump. In reference to facilitation, as I was saying, what is being taught in this new instructor course is something called experiential learning model. Mm -hmm. Experiential learning model is a five-part cyclic learning process. Mm -hmm. It starts with a, a concrete experience, mm -hmm. meaning um, here's a new topic, and this is one of the, probably one of the most basic um, examples I can think of is a drill and ceremony. Mm -hmm. So when we introduce the drill and, ceremony, drill and ceremony lesson plan to the students, first thing we do, hey, this is drill and ceremony, action, condition, standards, hey, let's go outside. Mm -hmm. Or even before you even introduce it, say we're going from chow back to the barracks. And that's another part of basic leader course is soldiers march everywhere from building to building. They get in a formation. It helps develop some of those core principles of marching, which is a definite like not only historical part of the military but still a mandatory part of that structured like hey we're in the military we're in groups more than two or three we need to be marching <clears throat> so we're developing that throughout the entire course soldiers march everywhere that we from building to building not only teaching them just the one lesson plan of drill and ceremony so but back to this concrete experience as part of this 
experiential learning model. It's the first step. Having a concrete experience is almost like failing at something, but in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So we have soldiers like, all right, you come up here or whoever would like to march the formation from here to the jail hall. Mm -hmm. And you allow them no instruction whatsoever. Allow them to go for it. Mm -hmm. And whether they do good or not, they're going to mess something up. Mm -hmm. And then you immediately have them stop the formation. All right, fall back in. Next person, come out here. Let's keep marching. And you just keep doing that. And you allow everyone to kind of have, and they don't know what's going on because you haven't explained anything to them. So you're creating a concrete experience mm -hmm. of designed failure to a point but with the intent of wrapping it back to an education. So becoming uh, an instructor in the new course, um, ELM is taught now to help facilitate lesson plans. And ELM is being the experiential learning model that the Army has adapted. There are five steps. The first one is concrete experience. Then you have publish, and process, gather new information, mm -hmm. develop or develop a plan, and then apply. Now I say five steps, it's not one, two, three, four, five, and I'm done. It's one, two, three, four, five, okay, let's start again. Right. Because as any good leader knows, there's most people that have planned to do anything. <laughs> um, best laid plans? Best laid plans don't always actually come to fruition. So even though I develop a plan and I put it into action, I'm, I, I will fail again at some point. If I, have, if I started with a quarter, quarter good plan and I failed at a quarter, while well, I develop a plan that gets me to 50%, I'm going to fail again. And you just keep going through all five constantly until there is no ultimate, like, I'm finished. It's, it's right. always cyclic. It's always sure. happening. Because that's life. Life is constantly circling. It's constantly changing. It's constantly mm -hmm. adapting. And that is how the Army wants us to learn and develop as leaders. Let's, right. let's break this cycle of steps one, two, three, four, five. That is not how life works. It's mm -hmm. not how the enemy looks at us. I pick up my gun, I point it at you, and I shoot it. That's not... Nobody thinks like that. That's not real yeah. life. Um, so these five steps, concrete experience, publish your process, gather new information, develop a plan, and apply. Constantly have to cycle that through everything we're learning. And all of these new classes we're teaching are focused in that method. Sure. As a facilitator, we try to work through that. And every single lesson plan is developed in writing. Mm -hmm concrete experience. Um, USASMA has developed all these new lessons plans around ELM and that is the core basis of how they created these lesson plans because the Army feels that is the best way right now and I personally agree mm -hmm. <clears throat> with that as well because I have not only lived it, I've taught it and I've seen the effects. Um, and I personally agree with it, not just in uh, military training, in life. So I, I teach uh, ELM to the students, which is not necessarily a directive of the BLC course. Like, hey, we're going to teach you all these lesson plans with this method, the ELM, and I'm going to tell you each time we get to each step, it has to be more natural than that. Because then we're going back to task-oriented learning. Mm -hmm. The facilitation of natural flow of information the learning process is more natural mm -hmm. it just it flows it's easier to, for for students to pay attention be more engaged when you know, i don't have to stop and say okay this is the next phase of what we're doing okay all right we're going to develop a plan now mm -hmm. you just say hey now that we're done kind of thinking about and processing Let's gather, you know, is there more information out there about our concrete experience and the things that we polished and, and processed about it? Right. Okay, let's get out there and let's gather new information. Has somebody else had a different experience? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, can we go on the internet and read up stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, uh, talking about other information, the CALL, the Center for Army Lessons Learned website, mm -hmm. um, is all about lessons learned. Right. And that is out there for anyone. It's, it's, it's free. It's full of experiences that are happening now, have happened in the past. 
and leaders get out there and they enter these things into the uh, Center for Army Lessons Learned um, and put it out there for, for people to have. Uh, interesting side fact, and I don't know if you want to call the call website. Uh, the original call has been around the center. Uh, I think it was just Army Lessons Learned when it started back in, I believe it was World War II. Um, people were having problems with fighting the Germans in one part of Europe, and people would make reports and then send them back to HQ, and then HQ would send them out again to people, or the people are having problems and or having success. All this information was getting fed back to Central Point, and then it was getting redistributed as, hey, this is what's happening. This is how we have, other people have found to fix this problem to help us. Right. And Army Lessons Learned has been around for way longer than any, most people even know. I actually learned that in SSD3, mm -hmm. believe it or <laughs> not. Um, fun fact about the military. Um, well, to go back to your example then, so, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, that, that model, so you've got uh, the concrete, uh, or concrete, concrete experience. Con concrete experience. So that concrete experience is, you know, cycling these uh, members of the schoolhouse out of that formation as they, as they make a mistake. As they go back in that formation, they're processing, they're paying attention to what this person is doing who's leading the formation. And they're making mental notes saying, okay, well now, you know, I, I know I need to call it on, on this foot next time or what, what have you, or, you know, absolutely, you know, cadence, I've got to, you know, hit it, hit, hit it this level in order to make sure that the folks in the back in here. Okay. And then they're moving on to gather more new information. Well, you know, they, they, they're processing what they did wrong. They're evaluating how everybody else is doing it. So they're gathering more information. Um, and I'm going to make a fool of myself, and I forgot the next step. What is Developing it? a plan. Developing a Ah, yeah, see, so perfect. <laughs> see, I'll, I'll get this through the uh, the ELM method. Um, so they're going to develop a plan. Okay, next time I'm up there, I'm going to make sure to do this. And then... Uh, apply. And, and then... <laughs> and then they're going to apply that. So the next opportunity they go up, they're going to imply... Or imply they're going to apply what they learned from that little methodology and they may get a little further next time as they're marching the formation before they they make their mistake when they make it okay another mental note gonna go back and do the whole thing again so is that is that a pretty good that is a good illustration of all five uh cyclic steps or cyclic phases of elm and you brought up a really interesting uh point to it as well so in the schoolhouse, we teach, you know, it could take two to three hours mm -hmm. um, for a new lesson plan to be go through the entire five steps mm -hmm. of ELM. Um, in the heat of the moment, soldiers, you can absolutely go through all five steps in your head um, while actually performing something. Mm -hmm. um, it may not be as in, in depth and you may even skip over polish and process or gather information and go from concrete experience or I made a mistake straight to develop a plan or apply. Um, and, and there is some hopping around there when it's happening much faster. But if you're doing all five steps, it can take longer, um, which is how all the lessons plan, while in the institutional part of training, it's easy because we have time and we can go through all five steps and then bring it back full circle and uh, it's an amazing to see the development and, and the, the ideas pop and you can see the lights come on <laughs> in the soldiers' heads as we're teaching lesson plans and courses and you know sure. allowing them to really get into it. Um, Honestly, I mean, it's such a phenomenal tool. And at the end of the day, when you think about it, like a team leader is a teacher, right? you know? So you, you're, <laughs> they go to the school they're learning via the ELM method, but you know if 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 they muckle onto the core concepts of uh, of you know those those five steps of ELM and they take it back, I mean that's going to make them so much more effective as well you know a, a leader one, but but also that that mentor you know because um, in that in that training environment that's you know platoon leader platoon sergeant is is going to give you the task and they may may you know supervise. Uh, you know, your squad leaders are going to be 
a little bit more involved, your team leaders are really going to be the ones hands on with those soldiers. So that's such an effective teaching tool. And of course, those team leaders are eventually hopefully going to become squad leaders one day or platoon sergeants or first sergeants. And that that's a that's a method that doesn't really it's it's evergreen, really. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, that method will go all the way to the top if they embrace it at the E5, E4 level and they can carry that again as a foundational tool as they go forward. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for institutional learning. It, it, it's for, for operational learning. It's for life. It's something you can use in your personal life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I always tied it back when explaining ELM as a process to learning things. It's not just, hey, we're at a university and this is how we teach a class. Mm -hmm. no, no, this is a life model right. of self-education. <laughs> um, it can be used in any method, in any environment, any situation. Absolutely. All right, so I'm sold. I mean, the, the ELM method is fascinating. It sounds like the school's really interesting. It's, it's, it's really more from even the days when I went in. Um, so I am motivated specialist Miller. I really want to get to the basic leader course. Uh, what should I be doing to set myself up for success, make sure I'm ready? Setting yourself up. One of the biggest things I would say to set yourself up for success for BLC mentally mm -hmm. is to uh, talk to the people that have just come back. Mm -hmm. um, pick their brains. Uh, talk to them about what's going on. Because it's not a secret. Now it's, and I think there's always a misnomer. Um, Army style training, there's uh, uh, test control is a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't afford to have any part of our, our written test because we don't want to you know, invite the opportunity for cheating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously that goes against some of the core army values of people sure. cheating. But, you know, locked doors keep honest people out. Um, and we want to believe all of our soldiers are honest. So test control is a big thing. But that's really the only kept secret when it comes to course material. Mm -hmm. So all the course material for BLC is out there somewhere. It is, it is researchable. You can grab it, you can read it, do some read-aheads if you can get a hold of something. I, I uh, told students um, before they left, hey, does anybody want anything that we went over? Do you want any of this digital stuff? Do you want the lesson plans? Do you want any of the stuff we've worked on that is public accessible information, sure. um, controlled, you know, it, it's released, uh, unclassified, you know, you know, for view all. If there's anything that you guys want to take back as a tool, and to share, and I always encourage students that were at my my uh, at the RTI to take back and share with other specialists in E3s sure. um, that will eventually get promoted and come to BLC. Because mm -hmm. you can only come as a specialist or an E5. You can't come as an E3 currently. It shouldn't be, I want to go to this course because I want to get promoted. I want to go to this course because I want to be a better leader. Mm -hmm. Yes, the secondary effect is now it makes me qualified for promotion but that shouldn't be the primary drive. And I think that somehow, sometimes on the leadership side, mm -hmm. we have some top down pressure. Hey, we gotta sure. get these soldiers promoted. What do we need to do? Oh, well, we gotta send them to these courses. All right, send them to BLC. Mm -hmm. We're doing almost like there's an overtraining or a misrepresentation of why people are going to courses. Mm -hmm. um, being in the military itself is also an internal decision. Am I here because, did I join the army because I, I wanted the college benefits and the free money and the bonus checks? Um, or did I join because I have a sense of patriotism and I enjoy you know, serving the community and helping those that can't help themselves? Right. Um, it's the same, same principle and that mentality that goes back to why am I going to this uh, education course. Why am I going to this development course? Is it for promotion? Is it for personal gain? Am I learning how to be a better NCO or a better leader? Or am I just going to check the boxes? Am I just going to check the boxes? Um, these are all the things in preparation. You really have to self-reflect because you're going to get challenged. Uh, we challenge norms uh, in the new BLC. We challenge old stigmas. We challenge uh, personal belief systems not religious, just military belief systems. Mm -hmm. um, one of my personal favorite things to do on, on any basis, I, I will sit down and talk to anyone about military leadership theory. 
Mm -hmm. um, because there's there's a lot of different ones out there. And then there's the, the army doctrine on leadership, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of leader theory, mm -hmm. um, which I really enjoy because there's so many different perspectives sure. uh, because of different experiences. And that ties back to ELM. All the concrete experiences that everyone has had throughout their entire careers has created all these different plans of action mm -hmm. that people apply to their actual active life in the military. And they don't even realize that they're doing it. Uh, it's such a wonderful thing to <laughs> sit back and know what's happening and watch people right. live their lives and they don't really realize that they're doing it. Um, it's interesting. So, I mean, as with most army schools, uh, you know, there's, there's a baseline requirement of you as a soldier um, in order to be eligible to go to that school. I know there's, there's physical requirements, you know, usually you can't be flagged. So what are those base requirements in order to be able to attend BLC? So standing right now, the minimum is E4 specialist or corporal, um, the completion of DLC one mm -hmm. must, it's the first leading phase before, um, basic leader course, it's that first online course. Mm -hmm. No neg negative actions pending. Um, must meet Army height weight standards from AR 600 8 9. Also, the soldier must be in compliance with AR 600 9 Army uh, body composition program. Mm -hmm. um, have a uh, passed a Army fitness test, uh, preferably within 30 days before attending the course uh, at the unit. Sure. So, I mean, those, those requirements sound pretty standard, um, but you as an instructor, I'm sure, you've, I'm sure you saw it where, you know, soldiers had that passing PT test when they arrived there and then they failed their PT test. So is there maybe something above the minimum that you might recommend soldiers try and meet before, you know, setting foot on that plane or bus or what have you to, you know, attend that course? So my units, um, while I was teaching BLC, I was still part of a unit down in South Florida mm -hmm. and uh, our battalion instituted a policy uh, that any soldiers wanting to attend uh, BLC must pass at least 70% um, okay. across the board of the, the three events. Mm -hmm. um, and even other brigades sometimes, they'll even bump it up to 80 mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, honestly, at that age, typically the average soldier going to basic leader course between uh, 20 and 24, maybe even 25, mm -hmm. um, you know, meaning 70 to 80 percent really shouldn't be that much of a problem. Right. And I don't even think it's so much a, a level of percentage, more standards, acceptable standards within a unit. Um, I think that's really where I mean, the soldier has to have that personal motivation to do push-ups correctly, sit-ups correctly, um, and train themselves to run the two miles in the allotted time. Sure. Uh, but it also that falls back a bit on the unit too, because there's a lot of people that don't have, don't want to disappoint or fail a fellow soldier because their push-ups are a little off. Right. But the reality, the mentality um, when coming to attend basic leader course is we stick to as instructors the army standard right um, in FM 7-22 uh, what push-ups are what sit-ups are and we absolutely have that two mile course set up in the time and we keep our clocks and everything is and keep everything to the standard yeah so definitely make sure that you're doing everything right before you get to the school absolutely um, but let's let's switch gears a little bit onto like the knowledge side of the house um should is there some knowledge i should have or or maybe it might be worth my time to go out and get before i attend the school or um you know does the schoolhouse provide study materials uh beforehand or is that really kind of encapsulated in dlc one for knowledge really because uh, they're in the new blc there still are some task oriented things you know we still cover um, drill and ceremony. Um, we're absolutely covering uh, PRT. A lot of what the PRT that we do at BLC comes from um, the graphic training aid uh, that is correlated to FM 7-22. Um, it's easy to find on Google. Um, you just look up PRT Army 
GTA, which is Graphic Training Aid, and it's one of the first things that pops up. Sure. Um, units should have them available, or supply sergeants can order them. They're not hard to get a hold of. Um, we give them to the students when they come to BLC. They take them with them. So again, if anyone that comes, you know, if you know someone that just graduated, hey man, do you have your PRT card uh, reference, quick reference guide? Can I see it? You know, study up on that because there's a lot of drills built into that that we help have the students learn. Um, there's also a PRT app um, that is out there. Uh, that soldiers can download. It's not just an app for PRT. There's a, a height weight um, calculator on there. There's a, a PT test calculator on there as well mm -hmm. to tell you your score. Um, and I have used it for years and I've never seen it fail me to where it was off by any significant amounts. Sure. Um, the um, In there is built all PL, PRT drills as well. So I, I highly uh, uh, recommend, it, it looks like a little kettlebell. Uh, it says PRT app, Army PRT, with a kettlebell as the picture. Um, download that well in advance. Learn a lot of PRT drills because they're taught and we expect the soldiers to perform them. Um, and there's a little, there's a few nuances with uh, tempo moderate, high, and slow that comes with it's all in there in the there are YouTube videos that are linked to the app that show actual demonstrations Perfect. Um, of all of these exercises. Mm -hmm. So going through the entire thing, I mean, that's it's a good little sit down. And mm -hmm. how many of us nowadays are just sitting at home, we have our phones and we just do this for five or six <laughs> hours playing on some game mm -hmm. that we downloaded for free and not actually doing anything. So sure. it, get on the PRT app, Spend two or three hours, watch the videos, mm -hmm. have some experience before you get to BLC, have some knowledge. It'll definitely help. Um, and you can help others too while you, when you get there because you already kind of know what's going on for PRT. Okay, so, you know, <coughs> Specialist Miller has gone ahead and he downloaded the, uh, the PRT app, the Army PRT with the Kettlebell app. Yeah. And I've been studying. I've brushed up on my drill and ceremony and I've even... Memorize the NCO creed. There you go. So I, I've done all of that. How do I get my unit to send me? So that is somewhat of a simple and complicated situation. Mm -hmm. In the basic simple version, there is a training seat that the state has available. They load you into ATARs and they give you your course dates. You're contacted by um, the schoolhouse typically 45 to 30 days out, mm -hmm. you should get an email welcome letter mm -hmm. that spells out how to get to the school, all the things that are at the uh, institution and on the base, um, things to expect, how to do in processing, points of contact should all be in that welcome letter once it actually gets to you in your dot mail email. Um, that's the simple version. Mm -hmm. The harder version is being that outstanding motivating soldier to make yourself stand out and let your leadership know that you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's not from a sense of, oh, I want to do this for my personal benefit. It's, that's, it's something that's more built into yourself that you kind of just get there because that's who you are. Yeah, you want to become that better soldier. Right, and units, they're objectively looking at um, their units and they create what's called an OML or an order of merit list mm -hmm. within their own company and platoons and saying, hey, we only have X amount of seats this year. We only have X amount of funding available this year to send soldiers to school. Um, and we have 15 soldiers, we can only send five. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you have to kind of make yourself stand out a bit and try to get yourself elevated. And there's nothing specific like, I tied my shoes today. I'm next on the list. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be kind of unit specific. It's right? unit specific. And that is the more complicated version. Sure. Well, I mean, and that kind of leads me right into my next question. You, you touched on it with that welcome letter. You know, it's got that packing list. So I got the slot. I am on the bus. Right. I can see the lovely army base in front of me. And... I've packed everything on the packing list, but you always know, like there, there's always those things that you want to pack extra just to just to be prepared. 
but I forgot blank. What are some of those things that maybe don't show up on that packing list that might be worth your while to pack for BLC? Packing list uh, for the new BLC is interesting because we don't... The six lanes, which is the uh, simulated training, you know, out in the field experience um, that was part of the former BLC, it doesn't happen anymore. They took that out. They took out land nav, and there's a and then uh, there's a lot of controversy about that. It's like these are core principles we have to teach. Well, again, they're task oriented things that we no longer teach in the new BLC. Um, but I have heard rumors that they might be incorporating some of that. I, I haven't read up on. Um, if they have actually done that yet or not. Um, so the packing list really for the new BLC um, is fairly simple. Um, that's probably not going to be on there though. Um, if you have a tablet or a laptop, mm -hmm. absolutely bring it. Um, yeah, if absolutely. you have your own hotspot, bring that because you don't ever know. Um, like the RTI we had, we had building Wi-Fi in the institutional training building and also in the barracks. But when you have 100 students, 120 students, 150 students, you know, and then all the other courses that the schoolhouse is teaching, you don't know how many students are trying to use this one Wi-Fi. Right. So absolutely, this is a more technologically advanced course learning environment. Mm -hmm. Bring those things with you that may or may not be... Uh, they not going to be on that, that packing list. Bring your hotspots, bring your tablets, bring your computers. Because mm -hmm. um, there's going to be things that you may or may not have access to. The, our school, we, we allowed students to stay a couple hours after dinner chow if they wanted access to the computer rooms again. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the, the computer, the environment, the classroom environment. Mm -hmm. there is, every student has their own computer. They have their right. own desk. Um, and we give them access to that all day and sometimes a couple hours after dinner chow to allow them to catch up on any documents that they are generating or mm -hmm. homework that they have to do or product that they're producing. Sure. Um, but definitely bring other stuff because there's just usually never, if you're helping other people, you're not working on your own work, mm -hmm. uh, which is good because then you're being part of the group and helping the group succeed. Developing those leadership skills. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to have time to do your stuff while you're helping other people. Sure. So bring stuff that is going to help you and others. If that's the type of person you are, understandably not everybody has available to that equipment or has that motivation. Um, other than that, uh, just trying to find the, that GTA card, mm -hmm. you're going to get most likely provided it's pretty standard to get the GTA, the, the, the physical fitness uh, tr gr graphic training aid provided to you. Mm -hmm. um, but there's nothing wrong with bringing your own as well. Trying sure. to get one from supply, study it, have the app. Um, also taking notes. Um, there's a lot of students that still have that tactile memory that helps them uh, learn things by taking excessive notes. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely encouraged, and we try to take our time when we see we have one or two, you know, excessive note takers, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's how sure. they learn. Um, well, then maybe on the converse, um, you know, each of these schoolhouses is different. You, you you hear, I'm sure you as an instructor saw some things that you're like, yeah, that those are, you know, you don't want to bring certain things. You don't you want to avoid certain behaviors. Uh, you want to in, avoid certain uh, you know, situations. What are some of those things that while I'm attending this school that I should be watching out for and, and avoiding? The BLC program is focused on learning. That is the core principle. There's no drinking. Mm -hmm. um, there's no travel off post. We lock it all down. You show up to BLC, you do your in-processing, get your room, um, you have the first like 24 hour travel day. You can go to the Walmart, you can go to the stores and get things that you need. Um, and that is briefed um, upon arrival and at the RTIs. Now, I, I know that, that I don't believe that is every single institution is the same way. Um, the Florida institution, while I was there, that is how we did it. And I personally believe it's a good method. It's three weeks. 
Uh, you should be able to manage yourself in a three week period. We had uh, mass transportation vehicles. You know, once a week we would ask the students, hey, we'll take y'all down to the PX. Y'all can get, you know, any materials, personal materials you need, items, whatever, mm -hmm. and we bring them back to the classroom. Sure. Um, so having full lockdown, and we tried to do MWR days in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we structured, it was a three week structure, more or less, 23 or 24 days, uh, having a Monday through Saturday work all the way through. And we tried to turn Sundays into a morale slash um, study time day. So BLC has uh, individual study time built into the, the class, the overall rubric, mm -hmm. time for them to study during the day. So we take all the study time from every single day and cram it into a single day mm -hmm. on Sunday. And so they get study time, morale day, they get to relax. The problem is we can't control them on those days. Right. They still have access. So it's it's one of those things. Don't go to your vehicle. Don't run off post. Mm -hmm. Go drinking or something silly and get you kicked out and dismissed from BLC. Right. It's only three weeks. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very manageable, reasonable amount of time to be locked down. You're getting provided absolutely everything you need to survive. You're there to learn, not party and have fun. That's not what military development is all about. Um, now let's pretend that I, Specialist Miller, am highly motivated and I wanna set myself up for success. I wanna set myself apart. How do I go about doing that in a BLC class? Standing, setting yourself apart and standing out amongst the crowd at BLC. Again, there is a an innate kind of, it is who you are. Mm -hmm. um, it comes naturally. Uh, being interactive, being part of group discussions. There's some things that I see personality clashes um, with uh, inverted emotionally people that aren't, you don't have, they're not as outgoing. They don't engage in group environments uh, as much. Uh, but that's it's part of being there. We're trying to break that uh, habit of not, uh, I want you to feel uncomfortable to the point where I can teach you to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, it is it, in a sense of, that's why public speaking is, a th is one of the classes we teach. Mm -hmm. um, to really stand out, uh, it's, it's, it's a little subjective. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, uh, instructors, we view, and we do this all the time, uh, and as often as we do it, you can tell who is outgoing uh, because it's part of their natural personality, and you can tell those typically who are doing it to intentionally try to just project confidence falsely. Um, be yourself, mm -hmm. true. be true to yourself. If you wanna stand out at BLC, be true to who you are as a person and a soldier and be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Be willing to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I would rather spend time, extra time with a soldier that is truly uncomfortable with a new topic than someone projecting overt confidence that yeah. seems extremely false. Mm -hmm. And I can tell that it's, they're, they're just looking for attention. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's it's interesting that you bring that up because we've had other you know guests on this podcast who've talked about you know soldiers can detect when you're not being genuine, when you're not being authentic, and you do that, and it's it undermines you as a leader. So, absolutely. you know, leader development course, oh, like, absolutely. Be, learn learn to lead in, in in a place where you're able to be yourself, but you're able to to affect that that positive change that you need to. Absolutely. Um. So let's say this motivated, but albeit introverted specialist Miller has figured it out and he and he's you know at the top of the class is there an advantage or is there something that that happens for those those top performers in the class just throwing out a random number but maybe the top 10 percent the top 20 percent oh, okay. um uh, the commandant's list um again there are some structural numbers there are uh, percentages that develop throughout the course. If you Tests take a test, all that, yeah. paper graded papers, um, 
and all this because a GPA, the, the grade point average has to be developed. And that really helps uh, us as instructors and the commandant mm -hmm. to um, determine where everyone is landing in the course uh, overall. Mm -hmm. um, so the commandant's list, Army Standard, top 20%. There is a minimum. Uh, USASMA created, it says 95.5%, and I, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it in front of me anymore, um, will be the Commandant's List minimum. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is dict it, it's dictated change because if I have 100 students and the highest grade is a 92, mm -hmm. USASMA says the minimum is 95, right. that doesn't mean we can't still have a Commandant's List. Mm -hmm. um, and there is some play in there. Uh, sure. Each class is going to dictate. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, I don't think I've ever seen uh, the highest grade being below the minimum mm -hmm. for Commandant's List. Um, there's always a few. There's always 10 or 15 students that meet that somewhere between 96 and 99 percentile, um, and then even in the new BLC. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's, there's uh, not just Commandant's List. Mm -hmm. Um, you have honor grad, distinguished honor grad. Um, they also now have, it's the um, iron, iron fit soldier, mm -hmm. iron soldier who has the highest uh, PT test. Um, and there's a leader um, acknowledgement as well. Uh, distinguished leader is what they call it. And that is a board, a panel, or uh, one individual from each platoon uh, does a mock board with um, three instructors as the the board. Um, and some of the questions in there, it's about the course material, uh, they have them recite the NCO creed, um, talk about their personal and military goals, and uh, there's usually a couple of, of um, secret questions um, that the president of the mock board comes up with right before each month or each course starts. Mm -hmm. So the boards aren't always exactly the same every time, sure. but they have a scoring chart and a after, you know, uh, they make a determination. And again, being in the board for Distinguished Leader, um, you could get all the questions right, you could quote the creed perfectly, mm -hmm. um, even upside down and backwards, <laughs> and then just be as stiff as a board um, and not really show any actual real enthusiasm for being there mm -hmm. and that's where you kind of fail yourself mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many correct book answers you have doesn't matter how many regulations you can quote or the creed or anything of that that those are all pieces of right. the board those are all pieces of how you get board points for distinguished mm -hmm. leader uh, and i think that also ties to actually being a leader mm -hmm. you can have all the right answers but if you don't actually care about all this knowledge or how to use it or what to use it for. Right. You're not going to apply it. You're not going to apply it. And what are you even doing at that point? Right. I've got a pretty good feel for the course. So, you know, Specialist Miller is, is ready to go. He's, he knows how to, um, he knows what the course is, what he's going to learn, especially the, uh, the ELM method, which really, really handy. Uh, he knows what he needs to do at the unit level and, and who he needs to be engaging with and what he needs to do to get sent to the course. And he knows what he needs to do in order to, you know, end up either on the Commandant's List or with one of the other distinguished awards that that can, you know, come out of uh, BLC attendance. So, um, you know, we've, we've gotten a really wonderful picture. Is there anything that you'd like to add um, before we, we sign off with you here today? I appreciate it. Um, yeah, there, one of the biggest things that I, I personally drive home every single course and, and my entire career is the career of the non-commissioned officer. There is so much in and laid, every single sentence in, in the creed has a situational uh, backfall to it. Mm -hmm. Meaning, every situation you run into, in my personal experience, and I haven't found anyone that can disagree, because I tell people this all the time, I've never found one person to disagree with the statement I've never run into a situation in my career that I couldn't fall back on the creed, some statement in the creed mm -hmm. that supports what I should do or what I could do or what I can do mm -hmm. to help guide me in the right direction. Right. Um, and that's one part of the creed. 
the other part, it, it really just sings home. I remember the first, uh, when I was in, in WLC, Warrior Leader Course in 2009, we were, my buddy uh, Doug Hutchinson and I were standing in the stairwell of our barracks for hours on end, <laughs> memorizing, going line for line and paragraph by paragraph, uh, just trying to memorize the Creed non commissioned Officer because we, it was told to us at the beginning that it was a requirement mm -hmm. and we'd have to say it at graduation and we still do that. It's still absolute tradition. Um, whether it's uh, mandatory to memorize, it's, it is. It, it's necessary to know. Correct. I, I, I hate saying it. it's mandatory to memorize before you leave BLC. You should know it. If you want to be a non-commissioned officer, they, that's where you really need to start. Mm -hmm. Forget any, there's no other starting point, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the creed. Yes, uh, uh, do the research for physical fitness. Do, you know, make yourself stand out at your unit. You know, uh, uh, pick the brains of people that have come back. But if you really want to know, start with the creed. Yeah. Memorize, you can memorize it if you want to. But if you really start looking at the creed line for line and understanding the definition yes, exactly. of each sentence, mm -hmm. what each sentence means to you and not only you, but what it means to you as a soldier in your unit mm -hmm. and kind of reflecting on your leadership. Hey, is this what how I'm being treated? Is this how I'm treating my soldiers? Mm -hmm. um, doing that self-reflection, it kind of motivates you to want to learn. Mm -hmm the creed of the non-commissioned officer. It's not a requirement. It's it a shouldn't be a requirement. It's a necessity to, to live as a, a leader. The creed is a complete, it, it's, it's the guidebook. It really is. When it was developed, they must have had people way smarter than me sitting around in a room and they worded it, in my opinion, absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Start with the creed. If you want to become a leader in this army, start with the creed and never forget it. Put it in everything that you do. It, that's why the creed has been imprinted and wood burned into so many plaques and given as presents at, to E5s and E6s and E7s. It, it is the core basis of everything that we should stand on as non-commissioned officers. Yeah, and you hit on that point, though, the, the understanding, which I think, you know, sometimes gets left behind in the wake of, I think, overemphasis on maybe the memorization piece that understanding piece i think is is far more important than the memorization even yeah. and on that note sorry bryce thank you for coming out today i know i learned a lot uh i hope our audience did and i hope as a result we're going to have a, a new crop of soon-to-be e5s who will have uh, benefited from from your knowledge as an instructor at the basic leadership course i really appreciate the opportunity sir miller thank you for um, asking me to come on and and provide my point of view and share my experience. If you would like more information on any of the topics discussed today, please visit our social media pages in the links below. Tune in to Leaders Recon over the next few weeks as we bring in today's leaders and pioneers to discuss their experiences, share their wisdom, and help you grow as a leader. If you like this episode of Leaders Recon, please don't forget to subscribe below and leave us a five-star review. You can find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.